Now, it's important to have a website with content that's nicely structured and organized. Very similarly to a library, for example, where you go inside and there's various sections in the library, uh, various topics, and they do that so you can find the exact book that you are looking for. And this applies to websites as well, okay? So if you organize the pages on your website in a nice structured way, like a silo, then that basically tells search engines that, hey, you are a subject matter expert in whatever niche, whatever topic you are writing about, so they trust you. Also, your readers can better navigate your website better and can find the information, go deeper into uh, that topic. So people trust you, search engines trust you, and that way you can rank higher and for more keywords. Now in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can build a silo structure for your website. Okay, so if you want to envision how a nicely organized website looks like, um, this is a great example. Okay, so this is a, a silo structure. You could also uh, call this like a pyramid because it looks like a pyramid, big pyramid, and then there's mini period, pyramids inside. Uh, but each one of these are silos, all right? So at the very top is the homepage, and each of these blue boxes are pages. So we have the home page at the top, and at the, the next row, we have the main topic pages. So these are these uh, category pages. And just below the category pages, we have subtopic pages. And just below that, we have a long line of blog posts. Now, one thing you'll notice are these black lines and arrows. Now, these arrows act as internal links. Okay, so the home page is linking to these five main topic pages and this main topic page at the very left uh, this one is specifically linking to these four subtopic pages you'll also notice the links pointing back up so these subtopic pages are also linking to the main topic page this specific one and then for the subtopic pages you see these black arrows pointing to the posts and vice versa. So these internal links are what create the silo, and that's very important. One thing you will not see are links uh, linking to another silo, right? All of the arrows they point in this single silo, they do not jump to the other silos. So the internal links are what create the silo, right? And more specifically, more importantly, the topics need to be under the same umbrella, all right? So for example, you have a page about uh, gym shoes. You wouldn't link to a page about gym shoes to a page about dresses because gym shoes and dresses have nothing in common. But what would make sense would be a page about gym shoes linking to a page about marathon running shoes because they are uh, similar, right, in terms of the topic. So you want to make sure you are linking to similar pages. Now you could also envision your silos in this kind of bullet point format. You could think of this also if you are writing a long blog article, you might first outline it through bullet points. And that's kind of like how you could do it with your entire website. So you have your homepage here and just below the homepage, you have your category page. Just below that, you have your subcategory, and below your subcategory, you have a list of various niche-specific articles. So we have basically like two silos here. Now to add more detail, I created um, these two silos with actual uh, keywords and blog topics. Now I'll show you in a moment how to come up with these keywords and these numbers are the average monthly search volume. So when I create the category and subcategory pages, I like to target keywords that have a higher average monthly search volume than my blog articles. It doesn't always need to be that way, but it is a good uh, practice to try to target get those 
keywords that have high search volume in your category of, or subcategory pages. And then your blog articles can be more of those long tail keywords, more specific keywords. So you can organize it in that way. So here I have a category page of gardening tools. And this category page is linking to um, this subcategory page for gardening tools for beginners. And then we have another subcategory page, gardening tools set. All right. Now, under each of these two subcategory pages, we have specific articles that relate to the subcategory page. So we have 10 gardening tools for beginners. What tools do I need for gardening? gardening tools names. Now you'll notice this one has an average monthly search volume of over 4,000. So it depends on your topic and kind of like how you envision your silo and, and your niche. This could be an article or maybe this could be a subcategory page because it does have quite a bit of the average monthly search volume. So you can make your educated decision. Um, now for this subcategory page for gardening tools set, this page will link out to these three articles. Okay, and then these three articles can interlink with each other. These three articles can link back up to this subcategory page. And the same deal with these articles as well. They are all interlinking with each other. But one thing to point out is that these articles never link to these articles. Okay, so they only interlink amongst their category and never link outside of their category. So this is how you can structure your silos on your website. Now, how do we get these keywords and how do we come up with these blog articles and figure out the average monthly search volume? So I like to use a tool, uh, Keywords Everywhere. This is a browser add-on that you can use for Chrome, Firefox, or Edge. Now, when you search for your target, your main keyword for your website, let's just say we have a gardening website and one of our keywords, main keywords is gardening tools. So I like to take a look at the widgets on the right hand side, specifically the long tail keywords and also the related keywords. So these lists of keywords right here are related to gardening tools. So I like to review these keyword lists take a look at the average monthly search volume and decide how I can group some of these keywords together to create a silo. And I can also decide, depending on the average monthly search volume, if it should be a category page and which ones can possibly be a blog article. Like say, for example, this Home Depot gardening tools, this one has um, over 4,000 average monthly searches. This one stands out to me. So I'm gonna click into it and do some additional uh, research. Okay, so for Home Depot gardening tools, let's take a look at what shows up in these widgets right over here. So for uh, long tail keywords, I really like this because we can see here, uh, Home Depot gardening tools set, Home Depot gardening tools rental, for kids, for rent again, so on and so forth. So what you could do is create a category or a subcategory page about Home Depot gardening tools and then link to other articles right here. So you can create an article about how to rent Home Depot gardening tools and another article about Home Depot gardening tools for kids, right? So you have two articles here. You can add internal links pointing to each one of these and then also pointing back up to the Home Depot gardening tools. So this is how you can create that silo structure inside your website. So when you have a lot of content about Home Depot gardening tools, users and search engines can view you as the authority, so they trust you, and you can rank for all of these keywords and also rank higher for these keywords as well because you are the subject matter expert. Now, another tool I like to use is the Keyword Planner uh, Chrome extension. Okay, so to um, use this properly, um, you should add your API, your Keywords Everywhere API key. And if you go back to Google, you'll see these four icons right here. Okay, this comes from the Keyword Planner Chrome extension. So this first one is the long tail keywords. This one are all of the question keywords the comparison keywords and the prepositions, okay? So these are all associated with Home Depot gardening tools. But actually, let me go back and do a more broad keyword like gardening tools. Now let's click on the first icon to see the long tail keywords. And what's cool is that Keyword Planner buckets the keywords 
that are similar to one another and they put it in these different colored boxes. So here you can take a look at all of these boxes and see what makes sense where you can create silos. So you can basically create pages for any of these relevant keywords and interlink them together to create a silo. Now this blue box kind of stands out to me because this one is all about gardening tools, Home Depot. Right, so kids gardening tools, Home Depot, rent gardening tools, Home Depot, um, Home Depot gardening tools, rental, right? So this could be an entire silo. And this red one might be another silo as well, gardening tools for elderly. There's also gardening tools for senior citizens. So depending on your topic, you can figure out what types of silos uh, to create but I really like how Keyword Planner visually organizes everything for you so you can analyze all of these long tail keywords in an easier way to figure out what types of silos you can add to your website. And all of these keywords also provide the average monthly search volume as well. So you can determine whether or not some of these keywords could be the category or subcategory pages and what, um, and what keywords can possibly be uh, blog articles, right? So really great way to plan out basically the entire website over the next few months, few years, because if you do your research, you have tons of articles uh, you can create. And aside from gardening tools, you can find other types of keywords related to your niche that you can write content around and interlink them to create those silos for SEO. All right, so hopefully you thought this video was helpful. If you did, the only way you can let us know is by smashing that like button and also subscribing to our channel. And if you wanna check out our other videos, feel free to click any of the ones on the screen. Thank you.